One of CBP's most important jobs is to safeguard Americans from the importation of counterfeit products. Uh, these products can not only cost hardworking Americans their jobs and money, they can be dangerous, as we saw during the pandemic with the huge influx of counterfeit COVID-19 items. Mr. 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 Novak, can you talk about how failing to crack down on counterfeit goods harms U.S. workers? You know, I know of a case, you know, a few years ago uh, where Chinese companies were sending in aluminum, primary aluminum, in the form of a pilot or in some type of shipping arrangement, and then it was getting sold and remelted and brought into the country that way. Uh, you know, <clears throat> what we make at uh, my plan is a, a, what we call SAL. It's an internationally recognized uh good it's got a shape a size a weight um and and the lme sets the price for that and we have to work within that margin of a price point to be profitable and if if somebody's bringing in a good that's that's in the wrong shape or or wrongly marked or mislabeled then yeah it, it definitely hurts mm -hmm. Mr. Novi, you have any insights on that? Just say it's, it's part, I think, of the, of the broadest challenge we face is that we have a trading system uh, that frequently allows goods produced illegally overseas to be imported and sold here, whether that illegality is in the context of counterfeiting uh, or the use of forced labor. And we need a much more aggressive approach uh, to policing that trade uh, to ensure that people cannot benefit mm. uh, from abusive and unlawful conditions overseas by selling products in the U.S. Yeah. You know, this, this issue is uh, only growing. According to the most recent report on intelligence property rights seizures, in fiscal year 21, CBP seized more than $3.3 billion worth of counterfeit goods uh, compared to $1.3 billion in fiscal year 20, uh, so almost three times as much. Uh, the report indicates that China and Hong Kong account for more than half of the product seized. Ms. Smith, how can we better combat the influx, uh, the influx, I should say, of counterfeit products from countries like China? Two things, Senator. I think, one, the continued partnership between the government and the private sector, particularly the rights holders. They know their business. They know their products. Um, and they can help educate and collect intelligence on the ground, which is useful to the government as they target counterfeit shipments. I think the second thing that we have to be sure of is that the U.S. government has the ability to enforce its penalties um, on overseas actors. That can be a challenge. Um, the, the enforcement process is lengthy, and it, also, it often does result in not being able to collect the penalty, collect the additional duties, um, because they can't reach the individual mm -hmm. that caused the importation in the first place. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll have to look at that uh, as a little bit of a potential foreign relations aspect. We'll have to look at that. The goal of tariffs is to pressure foreign governments to live up to their commitment to American workers and companies by forcing foreign producers to make price concessions or lose customers. However, too often when tariffs are imposed, they end up punishing U.S. importers with goods that are already in transit. Uh, Ms. Allen, Mr. Pickle, is it fair or effective trade policy to impose tariffs on goods that are already in transit when the tariffs are announced? Uh, I, <clears throat> thank you, Senator, for the question. I will tell you, as someone who has to um, apply those tariffs at the time of entry, it's a very complex environment today. Some dates for tariffs or um, other trade actions happen at time of export, some at time of arrival, some at time of entry, which can be different dates. Uh, and it's complex, so we'd like to have an opportunity to streamline that. Also, have predictability for our customers to know that additional tariffs are going to be implied. In, uh, applied to their goods before they're shipped. That way they have better predictability and contain those costs and understand how it's going to impact their, their uh, operations in the U.S. Mr. Pickle. Senator, no, it's not fair to have those surprises um, that, are, that are impacting not only American businesses but also American consumers as well. Um, those business decisions and purchasing decisions are made um, well in advance of the finalization uh, of, um, of the tariff actions and um, I believe the action you're suggesting would be appropriate. 
Yeah, that's why Senator Cassidy and I introduced the Fair Tariff Act in the last Congress. It would exempt goods that are already in transit from additional tariffs and require a standardized 60 days notice before new tariffs take effect. That would ensure that the burden of tariffs falls on their intended targets and not on innocent importers. And so I think, Mr. Chairman, a consistent standard that protects goods on the water from surprise tariffs uh, benefit importers without compromising the effectiveness of our trade policy. And we look forward to working with Senator Cassidy and with you, hopefully, to move it forward. Thank Sen you. Senator, Senator